Uh, great to be here with you. What I want to talk about is um, IPC, Interplanetary Consensus, which is a new protocol that we're building in the Protocol Labs network. And it builds on top of everything we've learned building Filecoin, IPFS, and Lip2P. Uh, the whole Web3 landscape is very, very far away from being able to reach the massive scale required by traditional products that we use in a day-to-day -day basis. If you think about your phone and all the applications that you use today, the scale of those, any one of those, is vastly larger than all of Web3 put together. And so the entire Web3 industry needs to scale dramatically to be able to build these kinds of experiences. To put it in kind of like numbers, these, this is the scale of what happens on the internet. This is from 2019. Uh, 2024 has only grown exponentially since then. It's an enormous amount of scale relative to what Web3 does today. So if we want Web3 to actually have an impact in people's lives globally, we need to be able to have a scalability level that can handle this kind of thing. At the same time, there's also this problem where there's an enormous amount of complexity and combinatoric issues with the super confusing and complex tool chain that we've built. We are producing things that are more and more and more, and more complicated and giving people super difficult experiences. And instead, most developers want a super easy um, runtime and a super easy experience to develop their, their applications. And with, uh, we're at AppChain's uh, conference today. There's an enormous proliferation of chains. There's lots of protocols. This is only going to continue increasing. We're going to be in a world with thousands of chains. So how are we going to like reason about this in this whole landscape? So um, we've been building a ton of infrastructure to be able to scale to, to really massive scales for a long time now. First with IPFS, then with Lip2P, and now with Filecoin. Through that, we got to experience the pain points of building application blockchain type protocols. And we put everything that we've learned into a new framework for building applications that I'm going to talk about today. And that's IPC. It's called interplanetary consensus. The interplanetary part comes from the interplanetary principle, which is the same principle behind IPFS. And it's meant to be infinitely scalable, really reach a level of scalability similar to what let Web2 has to give you the same level of of truly massive scale and speed that Web2 applications are able to reach. When you think about a Web2 application and the speed at which um, infrastructure operates, it's a totally different level of, um, of orders of magnitude higher than what we do today. We also want it to be like, deeply customizable. I, I, IPC is a, a structure that gives you deep customizability in the um, chain structure, so you can design the protocol to be precisely what you want it to be for your application. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on what this means a little bit later. And we want a runtime that is modular and interoperable across the stack that can hit many different, that can interconnect with many different runtimes from other applications and from other blockchains. So think of the, all of the um, experimentation and development and R&D that's happening through all the different L1s and L2 frameworks out there. You want to be able to be in a runtime that can easily interop with all of those groups. So I mentioned the interplanetary principle. This is kind of like the, the basic idea of, of IPC. You should be able to build a distributed system such that it can interop across planetary scale distances and still feel responsive to a human. So that means you need a blockchain structure that can work across planets. And today, most blockchain infrastructure does not work that way today. So it's also a structure that is based on how the internet works. So if you think about how the internet is organized, it's a huge grapevine with hyperconnectivity in the root and lots of little um, nodes connected through different grapevine lower layers. So that's the, the core foundational principles behind IPC, which is a structure and a framework to give you a hierarchical, recursive way of generating um, blockchain networks. So here in this tree map, think of taking any L1 and being able to hook into an L1 a scalable tree of subnets. So imagine being able to derive a subtree of subnets hooked on any, any L1, whether it's Filecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, whatever. And each of those subnets, it's its, o it's its own full blockchain with a set of validators and so on. And as you go down into the tree in the lower layers, you can do a bunch of interesting things. You can go faster because it, you can localize that region. So you can have 
subnets that are um, organized to be to follow a particular part of the world. So you no longer have to pay the speed of light around the world cost. Uh, or they could be application specific. So you could have a specific infrastructure uh, component like a database or um, a computational network or something like that, where a subtree is entirely oriented to build and de deploy that that uh, that thing. Or it could be application related. So think of a full application needing multiple subnets to operate, um, and that entire application is a, is a subtree that you can either deploy as a single thing or deploy as a, as a re repeatable uh, structure across many other other trees. This is kind of based on the virtualization idea that made the cloud super successful so far. So think of like containers and VMs and hypervisors and so on. It's the same kind of idea of being able to package programs and run them in components, but in the blockchain environment, where each of these subnets is able to um, solve a specific set of problems uh, and communicate the, the outputs of that, of that with the rest of the environment. A key thing here to enable this to work is a super easy calling convention from one subnet to any other subnet. So being able to do message passing from one subnet to any other subnet across the tree is like a key characteristic of being able to make this work. Um, but kind of like thinking in subnets for a moment, um, think of a, a full tree where you're, you're able to be even partition tolerant, where a subtree in IPC can disconnect from the entire rest of the network and continue operating with finality. Uh, while, and when you regain connectivity to the rest of the tree, you just keep settling there. Think of this as the way that the internet works. So today, if right now we lose connectivity to the rest of the internet, things still work in this room. Your computer still works. You can connect in Bluetooth with other components. You can still um, run a set, set of applications. If this city disconnects from the rest of the world, you can still settle transactions. That's how blockchains need to work. And so IPC gives you the structure to be able to um, build this kind of, this kind of thing. Um, the geographical um, partitioning is like a key element in being able to move extremely quickly. Because if you can localize the, the validators in a particular network to be in a particular region, um, then you can accelerate the block time of that particular chain. So imagine being inside of a single data center and have a chain that is only operating a subnet just in that single data center. And now you can move at 100 millisecond block times, so or potentially even lower, potentially 10, 10 to 20 millisecond block times. So imagine what that can do to you know, financial settlement and games and so on. I'm trying to advance. It's not advancing. There we go. Um, whoa, advanced way too much. Cool. So one of the key components that makes IPC work is that we are using the blockchain, to pro the blockchain structure, to give you a computational runtime to deploy whatever programs you want. So instead of looking at a blockchain in terms of deploying smart con financial smart contracts, think of a blockchain as a way of deploying single specific programs in a container or Kubernetes pod type of way. So as an app chain developer or as a blockchain developer in general, think of composing special purpose chains where you control precisely which, which specific programs should be running in that environment. And you have the full runtime of, of FEM to be able to do that. The key thing about FEM is that it's a hypervisor. It's not a particular single VM the way that like EVM is or something else. The FVM is a hypervisor that sits underneath that enables you to mount other VMs on top and run anything down, compiled down to WASM. So today in Filecoin, EVM contracts, you know, you can you write in Solidity, you compile to EVM, and that is interpreted in WASM and runs in WASM in the FEM. And so because you can target WASM, you can use any other uh, programming language or um, technology that you would want to control precisely what programs you want to operate in your subnet. So that means that the deeper you go in the tree, the more custom you can go. And suddenly, you can be in the lower leaves of the tree running potentially a game where an MMO game server can just sit um, and have full game server logic settling into a blockchain structure and transacting with the rest of the environment the same way as, as everything else. We think that this is going to be like a super powerful primitive to enable lots of different applications that exist today to bridge over into um, the blockchain environment. Um, this, kind of, this can be extended also to you know, think of like being able to hyper-customize your runtime. Like If you need a ZKVM for some reason, or you need FHE, or you need um, a specific like complex component of the runtime, you can 
change your subnet structure to incorporate that runtime to be able to run that, um, that set of operations. So by being able to do this, you can design precisely the environment that you need in your subnet to do precisely the jobs that you need, need that component to, to do. So for example, for a game, um, you could have um, you know, an F, a full FPS with like, you know, 30 ticks per second level updates um, and f you know, physics calculations and whatever. You can put all of that, compile it down to Wasm, and run it in a subnet. And that subnet would just be the players of the game connected together. And all of those operations would be sequenced together. And the output of the match, once the, the match completes, that subnet would report the outcome of the match to its parent. That game would get logged in the parent. And maybe in the parent is where you keep track of the scores. So yeah, IPC is a, a, a really massively scalable protocol. It's designed for extremely high throughput for regional or application-specific subnets to be able to be customized and to bake in privacy uh, as, as a first-class component. You could take an entire subtree and make it private. So you could say like a, a one particular subnet or a particular subtree of the, of the network can only be joined by, by nodes carrying a particular uh, capability or having a particular access control. So that means you can start blending um, subnets that are fully private um, with subnets that are fully public and still have economic trans transactions between, between these, these operations and still have full you know, calling convention um, uh, message passing across them. So anyway, IPC is like a, a, a bold new um, path to building blockchain applications. Uh, the, some of the early adopters include Falcon. The Falcon project itself is scaling itself using IPC. We're going to have you know, a whole swath of regional subnets and application-specific subnets and so on. Um, there's projects like Fluence that are launching you know, new uh, computational platforms using IPC. There's applications or, or um, uh, special purpose networks like Spark. Spark is a, a network that organizes, I think, thousands of different machines to be able to um, coordinate a retrievability network to test whether or not uh, people are storing data. Spark uses, uses IPC. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other groups uh, starting to adopt the network. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, um, the project is still like um, early, though it's getting adopted by a lot of groups. We highly recommend that you work with us to define your use case. And we can tell you, like, hey, we're ready for you or not. And, um, and especially if you have a specific feature request that you want us to develop against, um, you can get uh, talk to us. We're going to be selecting a set of um, interested developers to, uh, to go into the next batch of our early builder program. So if this is interesting, um, check out the QR code and come build with us. Uh, a lot of our team is going to be around in Meetember, and there's a bounty in the hackathon. So come check it out. Uh, cool. Any questions? I don't know if you can hear me. Maybe your brain is like, my brain is certainly like sharded between the conversation over there and here. Uh, yeah. So, what question? Yeah, so um, you can mount, so think of FVM. FVM itself is a hypervisor. You mount other VM runtimes on top. So if you don't want the EVM, you can put the Agoric VM on top. Yeah, and I think, I think um, it would be useful to get your input in the hypervisor layer to see, to see the calling convention there and, and so on. Because we're doing th cool things that you're going to like, like continuations and so on. Yeah, so be, imagine being able to do async, async programming from the smart contract. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm giving the, the rest of the, yeah. yeah. Um, other questions? Yeah. Uh, so people are deploying IPC networks today already. Um, it's still like the the tooling is getting better over time. Um, so I think what it sort of depends on a per application. Different. It's ready for different applications at different points in time. So for specific kinds of uses, it's ready today. For other uses, I would say like a little bit later. Um, I think to integrate um, the Agoric VM, the first thing that I would do is I, I would integrate it with, with the FVM first and then go from there. Yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, so the examples that I described. So we're scaling Filecoin with it. So we're 
the entire Falco network a, a computational platform, a special purpose network that is um, uh, organizing thousands of nodes to do retrievability. Yeah, so um, let me give you two, two examples that we're pretty excited about and we're developing against. Um, one is M an MMORPG. So think of like a full MMO game where you maintain the core economy of a particular world in one of the subnets. And then you have regions of that world um, as subnets of that network. So you can have a bunch of the players interacting and you know, fighting, trading with each other, and so on in their own subnet. And then that consistency is enforced in the parent uh, of that particular world. And if you ha have fully different instances, you can do that. If you have one single market, you can do that, and so on. So that's one example. The other example is a social network. So imagine being able to put all of the artifacts of a social network, like every single like, tweet, every like, every view, every like, reply, everything directly into the subnets themselves. And so you just, you just shard it. Like, if you need more scale, you just fan out. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Sweet. I don't know how I, whether that was good or not. Uh, we're going to have... Uh, I turned it off, by the way. How did it go? I didn't have a chance.